I am Macbeth. I am Macduff. I am Malcolm. I am Ross. And we are performing Act 5, Scene 8 from Shakespeare's Macbeth. Why should I play the Roman fool and die on mine own sword? While I see living men, wounds are better on them than on me. Turn this way, hellhound, turn this way. I have avoided you more than any other man. But get back from me. My soul is already too burdened with your family's blood. I have nothing to say. My voice is in my sword, you villain. Too murderous to be described in words. You're wasting your strength. You'd find it just as easy to damage the intangible air with your sword as to make me bleed. Let your blade fall on vulnerable heads. I lived a charmed life that cannot be lost to a man born to a woman. Lose hope for your charmed life, and let the demon you've been serving tell you that Macduff was prematurely ripped from his mother's sewing machine. May the tongue that tells me so be cursed, for it has daunted my manly spirit. And let no one else believe those cheating devils who trick us with their double meanings, standing by the letter of their promises, but breaking our hopes with them. I won't fight with you. Then surrender, coward, and live on to be the carnival attraction of the age. Just as we do with the rarest freaks, we'll paint your picture on a banner and hang it from a pole. And under the picture we'll write, here you can see the tyrant. I won't surrender to warm young Malcolm's feet and be tormented by the curses of the rabble. Through Burnham Wood has come to Dunsinane, and I'm faced with you, a man not born to a woman. I'll test fate one last time. I hold up my warrior's shield in front of my body. Fight on, Macduff, and may the first one to cry, stop enough, be damned. Yeah. Are you ready to get socked? Ah. Ah. Does it feel socky to play yourself? I wish the friends we're missing had arrived safely. Some of them must have died, and yet, judging from the numbers of survivors I see, our great victory today has been won with few lives. By the way, I'm Seward, and we were short one person. Macduff is missing, and your noble son. My lord, your son has paid a soldier's debt. He only lived until he was a man, and as soon as he as he had proved himself as a man with his bravery, fighting at his post without shanking, he died like a man. Then he is dead? Yes, and carried off the field. You must not grieve enough to match his value. If you do, your grief will never end. Were his wounds in front of him? Yes, on his front. Well then, let him be God's soldier now. If I had as many sons as I have hairs, I could not wish finer deaths for them. That's all the tolling he'll get for his funeral. He deserves more sorrow, and I'll give it to him. He's worth no more. They say he departed well and paid up his bill. And so, God be with him. Here comes further comfort. Hail King, for that's what you are. Look, here stands the tyrant's accursed head. The world is free from evil. I see that you are surrounded by the noblest men of your kingdom. Who are thinking the same greeting I now make, I wish to hear all our voices say it aloud. Hail, King of Scotland! Hail, King of Scotland! I shall not waste much time before I reward each of you for your services, so that I don't remain in your debt. My thanes and kingsmen from now on will be called earls, the first men ever honored by that title in Scotland. There is more to be done, which should be carried out quickly to begin our new age. For example, we'll call home the, uh, from abroad our exiled friends who fled to escape the shrewd tyrant, and we'll bring justice and cruel agents of this dead butcher and this fiendish queen who is, is believed took her life by her own violent hands. Whatever else we are called upon to do, we shall carry it out fully at that proper time and place by the grace of God. So thanks to all you together and to each one of you. And we invite you all to see us crowned at Scone. The...